Hey, this is the great Johanna speaking. Um, let's have a little conversation about Western civilization and where things are headed. If I look at white people in general, uh, if I look at the people that I've gotten to know, I think most white people are obedient to authority. They are unthinking. They never question the reasons given. They believe whatever the media tells them to believe. And strangely, they are able to hold two thoughts in their heads at the same time that are in conflict with one another, but they never wonder why. For example, everybody in the West nowadays condemns the colonial era when white people went to Africa to seize resources and materials and so on and so forth. The Africans at the time were not organized enough to withstand people from the north with their modern technology, their ships and their horses and cannons and guns. But today, there's another place, almost the size of a continent, that Europeans are trying to colonize. The colonization of Russia failed under Napoleon and it failed under Hitler because the Russians were organized and they had armies of their own and they could fight back. You see, it was just after the colonization of Africa that Napoleon tried to invade Russia. He reached Moscow, but the Russian Tsar had burnt everything between uh, Moscow and Napoleon's armies, the French army, the Grande Armée, to the ground. And when Napoleon's troops arrived to Moscow... There was nothing to eat there. Moscow was burning. The people had fled. The Tsar had fled. There was nothing to conquer. The French troops were decimated, by which I mean almost 90% of them died. And they had to retreat. The French had to retreat. And it would take until Adolf Hitler before uh, another party attempted to colonize Russia. Though in the case of the Second World War, I would say this is a little known fact is that actually uh, the Russians had already invaded uh, Czechoslovakia, I believe, and uh, Ukraine and Poland, and that Hitler understood very well that the Poles at the time did not have the military capability or the technology to withstand the Red Army, 30 million soldiers drummed up by Stalin. And he realized that literally no other European nation could stop the Russians bar the highly advanced, technologically advanced German nation that had been unified by Otto von Bismarck in the late 19th century. So it was up to the Germans to fight the Russians. But Hitler too described um, uh, his uh, well, war on Russia as a uh, colonization effort to drive out the Slavic peoples and to replace them with Germanic peoples. The, it was called uh, uh, the Generalplan Ost, to go eastward and get the land. In fact, that is what I think uh, motivated the German soldiers to, uh, to, to listen to Hitler, to basically to follow Hitler's orders. Why? What's in it for them? Or do, you can't just order people around and uh, get them to have themselves killed, uh, not even Germans. The Germans' officers, for example, all of them were promised that if they would win the war, they would get a big patch of land with a house of their own so they could farm there and have a family. This uh, this was a very appealing promise since uh, the mechanization of Germany had sent so many men to the cities looking for work since the farms at home had now been mechanized with uh, machinery and where you used to need 20 or so men to do the work, now you just needed one or two tractors or so to do the same kind of work. So Germany was at a crossroads between, you know, transitioning from a traditional rural society into a highly technologized society. Uh, that also meant that so many young men and women were now out of a job. There were no more farms for them. The farms had scaled up, had become conglomerates, a process that is still continuing in our time. So the promise of going to Russia, taking the Russian land, driving out the Slavs, and making 
all of Western Russia up to the Ural Mountains, a new Germania was a very, very tempting promise, a very tempting uh, prize to win. But as we know, Stalin successfully stopped the Germans at Stalingrad. And I have my theories about the fact why the Germans went to Stalingrad first rather than to Moscow. Of course, the Nazi leadership had learned from history. They were not going to make Napoleon's mistake, but they made another mistake of their own. Look, they wanted to go to Stalingrad or St. Petersburg nowadays. But why? Why? Because St. Petersburg used to be the seat of the Tsar. And if you could capture Stalingrad, that's where you could re-establish Christianity, right? You could rekindle the Tsarist, uh, you know, loyalties and then reinstate, uh, well, use the Orthodox Church to basically re-Christianize Russia because the Soviets, of course, were atheists. And... Uh, in fact, if you read some of the, the witness accounts, a lot of people in Western Russia were glad that the Germans came around. They were glad that Christianity was coming back. Yeah, the Germans were spreading Christianity into atheistic communist lands, but they failed. They were driven back to Berlin, where allegedly Hitler died in the bunker. But the existence of a potential Russian army that might invade Europe and then annex Germany, or the other way around, the existence of a sort of Holy Roman Empire, a First Reich, Third, Second Reich, Third Reich, that might capture Western Russia and then form a gigantic Holy Roman Empire spanning from Ireland to the Ural Mountains, from Gibraltar to Lapland, that too is a threat to the British Empire, to the Anglo Empire. Nowadays, we call it the US Empire. Now, under the leadership of Doofy McDoofus, you know, Joe Biden, uh, we are supposed to do it again. Now, NATO in the past 50 years or since the Second World War has been capturing the leadership of all sorts of nations, including Iraq and Georgia and Azerbaijan and um, uh, also in the Middle East, Syria, Libya. We've tried to topple all of these regimes, regime changing a whole string of countries, Afghanistan, and of course, Iran and Russia are next on the list. Because if now NATO, using uh, Europe as its vassals, as its own colonies, basically, uh, led by the US, to try to invade Russia again for the third time, this time, it seems that the Anglo are trying it. The French did it under Napoleon, the Germans under Hitler. Now it's the Anglo under Joe Biden. They want to invade Russia. However, uh, the plan is not to do it right away. I suppose an actual invasion of Russia may take at least another 10 years, 10 to 20 years or so. The question is, will the Russians uh, win the support of China? maybe even of India and other such BRICS nations to try to push back this NATO US led fantasy of taking the heartland. The heartland is what a guy named Mackinder called a big chunk of Russia, that if you control that for its resources and from there you could, you know, uh, attack Europe and India and China if you wanted to. So it seems to be a, a crucial key territory that uh, the NATO thinkers, such as Brzezinski, Zbigniew Brzezinski, believed was crucial for the survival of the U.S. empire. Um, but like I said, as I, as I said at the start of this little talk, the European peoples uh, tend to be very naive about this. They see themselves as the bad colonials of the age when we colonized Africa, but at the same time now when we're going to basically colonize Russia for its resources because Russia refuses to sell its resources on the cheap to Europe and the West and so on. Um, and the fact that Russia does have a lot of oil and gas poses a threat. It may mean that we become, uh, the West may become ultimately dependent on Iranian, Russian and Saudi oil. There's a threat in these three players joining together, in fact, um, the Saudis have already uh, uh, diminished the production of oil 
which which causes the price to go up. And that's a bad thing because if you're NATO and you're planning on either invading Russia, you want to do it with cheap oil, but you also don't want the Russians to make a lot of money of their oil if the oil price is high. So Sa Saudi Arabia is already signaling that hmm, they're not really on the West's side anymore. The, the Western world is becoming more and more isolated, primarily because of this plain stupidity is that white people, most white people, simply do not grasp that they are the bad guys. White people are the bad guys, but we think we're good. We think we're winning. This is a form of arrogance and mixed in with hubris that might potentially lead to the total loss of Western civilization. Imagine that NATO, despite its control of allies such as Turkey and so on, and despite its rudimentary control on nations like Saudi Arabia, what if we do try to invade Russia for the next 10, 15, 20 years, and we fail? You know what that means if we fail? Then China wins, Russia wins, everybody wins except the West. The West will literally crumble and starve. Do the people living in Europe even realize that we have 750 million people living in our continent, that includes Ukraine and so on, and Belarusia? Do they even realize that if we lose our access to cheap fuels, such as the oil and gas, and if the, uh, if the transition to durable, quote, I mean, quote unquote, durable energy sources, such as wind and solar and water, if this transition fails and we lose our access to cheap fuels, do you know what that means? It means that Europe can only feed about 50 million people. That means over 700 million people will have to flee Europe. They will have to flee the cold. They, they will not be fed um, because our European our agriculture, as I told you, is completely mechanized by now. If you would lose your cheap fuels, you cannot grow crops. No maize, no potatoes, no carrots, also no milk and no meat. Nothing will grow here anymore in the cold. So I usually try to end videos like this on a positive note, is that at the very least, those soft times created by soft men are over, and we are facing the hard times that will produce hard men, tough men. And I'm looking forward to that, at least. Uh, personally, my idea is that we as Europeans, our 750 million, we shouldn't side with the Russian Empire, we shouldn't let Putin win, but we should also not let Biden who, or whoever is behind him. I think it's just George Soros and some of those weirdos who are behind uh, you know, the Obama and Biden administrations. Uh, we shouldn't let them win either because they're degenerates. So my idea is that if we can find a way, and I haven't seen it yet, but if we can find a way for us in Europe to rebuild a sort of Holy Roman Empire. And they always say that the Holy Roman Empire was neither holy nor Roman or an empire, even though uh, the Pope did appoint the first emperors and the old German word Rome did mean city. And well, if you have a Pope approved, you know, territory full of cities that might be called an empire. And if you go to Imperial Vienna, you cannot deny there was an empire. We should rebuild this empire, that's my belief, to form a bulwark between the Anglo-Atlanticists in the West and this Russian czarists and the whatever, whatever you call them, neo-czarists or Putinists, and make sure that once and for all, we here in Europe uh, amass the power that we are going to need in order to dominate this Western world at the very least for at least a few thousand years to come.